This is the fifth state winning headlines, your media police post. Mm -hmm. In this segment, we summarize the headlines that you may have missed this morning. And we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 29th of July 2022, and I am DK. I am MC Square. Mm. And I am AX. In case you missed the headlines, yeah. here they are. In the Daily Nation, IEBC calls talks. In the Standard, why Kashagwa lost 202 <coughs> million to the state. In the Standard, Raila versus Ruto, the Mudavadi, Kalonzo factor. Mm. And finally, in the People Daily, hefty pay for poll winners. winners yeah. But before we discuss the headlines today, yeah. DK, mm. why don't you kick us off? Let me take you off. Mm. And today I will start with a bottoms up question to hustlers. Mm. What is the difference between Devin Day and Alice Wahome? The answer to this question is simple. The difference between Devin Day and Alice Wahome is the synthetic wig that Alice Wahome wears. <laughs> they say that Day is the surrogate father to bottoms up economics. Mm. But when it comes to explaining what it means, mm. there is no difference between him and Alice. Mm. What yeah. is trickle down and what is bottom up in simplified terms? Uh, by working from the bottom down. Top down? Yeah, from up to, to you know, from top to bottom. This Tuesday, uh, Mama Mboga, who was working next to William Ruto, was pushed back by Ruto's people as a show of who her equals are. Mm -hmm. After that, during Ruto's monologue aided by journalists, aka the debate, <laughs> he failed to explain to Kenyans what bottoms up economics means. In a rebuttal, Devin Day has surfaced on Twitter with a graphic illustration of what bottoms up economic is. Yeah. And again, he illustrated that bottoms up is nothing but a contradiction. Mm. Watch this one. This is how our economy looks like today in terms of employment. Three million people working at the top of the pyramid, white collar. Six million people working in the middle of the pyramid, blue collar. 10 million people who are not able to get the opportunity and therefore they end up in what we are calling a lottery. What is bottom up? Bottom up is the following. It takes a million plus shillings to create a white collar job. 200,000 shillings to create a blue collar job. And you can actually create a decent job and stop this being a lottery for 50,000 shillings and a few other things. So, moving bottom up is about moving our capital from here so that it can create decent jobs here. In this presentation, I would like to invite you viewers to watch the arrows. Where do they face? They face downwards. Is that bottoms up? or is it trickle down? Mm. If Day is telling us that moving capital from up to the bottom is bottom up, <laughs> then it means that Alice Wahome's explanation of bottom up was right. Yeah. But why do we call Day the surrogate father and not the real father of this economic model? Mm -hmm. It is because, according to Mwendega Tabaki, and you know who Mwendega Tabaki is, mm. Devin Day does not believe in bottoms up. Mm -hmm. So this time round, he's on the in the UDA team. Yeah. He's their strategic advisor. He is actually the initiator, the author, I would say that, mm -hmm. of the bottom-up economic model. The first conversation I had with him about running as governor of Kiambu He's the first person who told me, but remember, bottom-up economics model is not for Kiambu. You okay. know, it's not for, he, he, he actually said two places. It's not for Kiambu, it's not for Nakuru. Why? Kiambu is a very wealthy county. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Kiambu and Nakuru means Kikuyus. Mm. And Kikuyus mean hustlers. Mm -hmm. 
And then hustlers means William Ruto's path to presidency. Mm. What was being said here is that bottoms up is not applicable to Kikuyus and therefore William Ruto is lying to them using Ndei. Mm -hmm. But where is the lie, yeah. we ask? And in my opinion, the lie is in the value of Ndei's pyramid. And I will help you, our viewer, to decipher this lie. Mm -hmm. for, for instance, rather, yeah. if you took three million people at the top of the uh, David Day pyramid and multiplied them with the one million shillings he's talking about, yeah. you will get three trillion shillings. Mm -hmm. If you took six million people in the middle of his pyramid and multiplied them with 200,000 shillings, you get 1.2 trillion shillings. And if you took the 10 million bottom segment and multiply it with 50,000 shillings, yeah. you will get half a trillion shillings only. Question is, is Devin Day telling us to jeopardize 4.2 trillion shillings in the top and the middle segments of our economy for half a trillion shillings? in order to justify bottoms-up economics? Mm. No. <laughs> According to Kikuyu law of mathematics, this math is not mathing. <laughs> <laughs> Half a trillion shilling is what Kikuyus could have gotten in five years had BBI gone through. Amen. Yeah. Day is not telling us where the money will come from. Mm -hmm. yeah. He is not telling us when it is going to come and he is also not telling us how long it will take to reap the benefits of his model. Mm -hmm. These numbers do not make sense. <coughs> and that is why this bottom-up model is not meant for Kikuyus. And if Kikuyus are not meant to use this model, yeah. it means that hustlers will not use it. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, William Ruto will not use this model. Mm. In a nutshell, Devin Day has sold his consciousness <laughs> to William Ruto and is being used as an agent of lies using his academic credentials. Wow. Yeah. Okay, thank you for breaking all of that down. Mm -hmm. Now, allow me to switch tracks ever so briefly. Yeah. Yesterday, the IBC announced that the Venezuela sticker saga and the standoff between DCI and mm. the IBC had been resolved. <coughs> yeah. In a meeting mediated by the Inspector of Police, Muta Mutayambai, mm -hmm. between DCI boss Kinoti and IBC chairman Chebukati, yeah. the two government agencies agreed to work together to ensure the electioneering process runs smoothly. Yeah. Yet something about this reconciliation does not sit well with my soul. Mm. The timing is suspicious, and I can't help but wonder why this reconciliation feels like a concession on IBC's part rather than a true resolution, mm. Mm. or mm. rather a laying down of the arms, if you will. Mm. Let us examine the facts. Mm. Last week, and yes, it has only been seven days, Last week, we learned that three Venezuelans reportedly working for Smartmatic landed in Kenya on expired passports without IBC informing customs. And they landed with sensitive election material <coughs> in their personal luggage. Mm. The material in question was stickers for each of the Keem's kits containing information on the polling station, polling center, ward constituency and county, as well as a unique barcode. Mm. Remember that the Keem's kits will electronically identify you at your polling station. Mm -hmm. And if your name can't be found on the register, mm. then you can't vote. So these stickers are not only critical in ensuring that the right kit goes to the right place. Yeah. They are also instrumental in allowing Kenyans to vote. Yet they were traveling in somebody's personal luggage like they are old socks and boxers. <laughs> Come on now. Now a week later, as IABC is confronted with yet another terrible lapse in judgment, Chibukati appears with a solution. Yeah. But he only appeared after UDA stopped singing IABC's praises. 
When I, when Azimio raised the problem of the two um, Form 34As and the 34Bs that were printed, yesterday, quite early, the IBC were quiet. Mm. Marjan only invited the parties for a consultative meeting after Kenya Kwanzaa protested too. Mm. This is weird because the 2017 presidential election was nullified because of problems with Form 34A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if the IBC wanted to avoid a similar outcome, surely they'd address any concerns regarding this form immediately. Yeah. Surely they wouldn't have waited until Kenya Kwanzaa spoke up to respond, mm. especially because Martha Kome and the Supreme Court are watching. Watch. Yes. This is why the timing of IBC's reconciliation with DCI is suspicious to me. It suggests collusion on a very particular issue, yeah. election misengineering. Is it possible that the sticker plot was supposed to take care of voters before they could vote, mm. denying them that right? Mm. And then the multiple copies of Forms 34 A and B were supposed to take care of the voters after, so that even if somebody is able to vote, mm. that vote would not count. Or perhaps sensing the mass public resistance to IEBC's handling of the Venezuelan problem, yeah. the IEBC and its controllers, some of whom <coughs> may like the color yellow, have backed down. They've thrown their hands in the air and they've returned back to the drawing board. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just asking questions. Because questions tell you more than answers. Yeah. But until we get our questions, remember that time is an essential ingredient of politics. Mm -hmm. This means that nothing <coughs> happens by accident, even an attempt at reconciliation. True, true, mm. true, true. All true. right, MC Scared, what do you have for us today? <laughs> Some of um, them who like yellow. <laughs> <laughs> today I am going to shoot straight. Mm. Shoot. Ms. K has told us that the candidate to beat in this year's election is the 50% plus, plus one, one vote requirement in the Constitution. Mm. Yeah. Simply put, mm. a candidate has to receive 50% plus one vote yeah. mm. of all the votes cast. Mm. But there is a little known sister to the 50% plus, plus one requirement. Mm. Okay. The candidate must also receive 25% of all the votes cast in at least 24 counties. Yeah. This means that one out of four voters must vote for you in, in at least counties. 24 mm -hmm. counties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These two targets must be met before a candidate is declared president-elect. Mm. And I would like to submit that it will be hard, if not mm. impossible, for Ruto to meet these two requirements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Allow me to explain. Now, using the average turnout of 71% obtained from all six elections we have held in the country, we project that out of 22 million voters, around 15.6 million voters will turn out to vote. Mm -hmm. So in order for Ruto to obtain 50% plus one, yeah. he must receive 7.8 yeah. million votes. Yeah. But his Kalinjin vote is barely enough. Mm. Mm. That is why he needs 90% of Gemma. Mm. But will Gemma vote for Ruto? No. Yeah. Why? One, Tuju told us that Gemma paid their debt to Ruto in billions. <laughs> Two, the mother effect has already lost Ruto over 6% of Gemma. Mm -hmm. yeah. You even saw very wise voters chasing Ashagwa from Meru mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. <laughs> Three, Gemma has already voted. Mm. They voted when a running mate was chosen. Yeah. Whether mm. they turn up on August 9 or not, mm. they are assured of a DP position. Sure. Now, with this in the pocket, Gemma has no motivation to vote mm. at all. Now, let us even assume that Ruto can get 50% plus one. Mm. He is still needing 25% of all votes cast in at least 24 counties. Yeah. Mm. Now, the counties that Ruto was calling his strongholds are only seven Kalijin counties. counties yeah. Yeah. And if you are generous and add him the 10 Gemma counties, you will have a total of around 17 counties. Mm. Now, Ruto will need seven more counties to ensure that he wins. Mm -hmm. Are the crowns being hired by corrupt Asla millionaires making him ignore these facts? Indeed, yeah. Babaman, on the other hand, yeah. is 44% strong. Mm -hmm. 
And I say this because in 2007, he had 44% of the vote. Mm -hmm. In 2013, he had 44% 44. of the vote. Mm. And in 2017, guess what? Yeah. He had 44%, 44% of the vote. <laughs> now, he is getting into this election 44% strong. Mm. His base has shown a historical consistency that Baba can rely on. Yeah. And the mother effect will add him another 6%. Mm -hmm. When you add Uhuru's one vote, 50% plus one will be easy, easy for Baba. Mm. And there is one last thing. Mm. In 2013 and 2017, Baba Man received more than 25% of all the votes in 30 counties. Mm. Now, he received over 25% of votes in the six coast counties, mm. the six Luo counties mm. and Kisi counties, mm -hmm. the five Maasai and the Kamba counties, mm -hmm. the five Luya counties, the seven Somali and North Eastern, Eastern counties, mm -hmm. yeah. and lastly, Nairobi. Mm. That makes 30 of them. 30, mm. yes. Now, Ruto means seven counties. Baba has a surplus of six counties. <laughs> So Baba is already in it. It is so decided. Amazing. Okay, so before we consider our headlines for the day, allow me to explain or rather reiterate what our headlines are. In case you missed them, here they are once more for you. Yeah. In the Daily Nation, we have IEBC calls talks. In the Standard, why Gashagwa lost 202 million to the state. Mm -hmm. In the Star, Raila versus Ruto, the Modavadi Kalonzo factor. Mm -hmm. And finally, in the People Daily, hefty pay for poll winners. Yeah. As you know, we have a three-part criteria that we use to judge our headlines. We ask ourselves three questions. Is the headline topical or speculative, repetitive or groundbreaking, thoughtful or just plain lazy? Yeah. What do you guys think of our headlines today? Ooh, I will pick the um, star mm -hmm. as a headline of interest. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. because I've been asking my, my, myself this question. Yeah. yeah. Where is Kalonzo? Mm. But when I think about Kalonzo, I also think about Mudavadi. Yeah. Who is Mudavadi? Mm. I haven't seen this gentleman. Mm -hmm. But according to polls, I hear Ukambani is 65% strong mm. yes. behind Raila Odinga. Mm. Meaning Kalonzo has decided to disappear but also appear mm. in his uh, zone. Mm. Yes. This is a question people need to ask. I haven't seen Kalonzo. I haven't seen Mudavadi. Mm. So when I saw the star, I felt like it was a bit topical, mm. especially nine days to the election. Mm. Mm. Uh, I also think Mudavadi was looking for 70%, <laughs> then Unga went down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it seems, by all accounts, our, the star is our winning headline for the day. I will go for the star, yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, MC Squared, why don't you toss the headlines that are, you know, not our winning headline for the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you have it. A winning head on a day where our winning headline is the star headline. Yeah. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. We are also on your TV screens, and you can find us on Pang Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. Yeah. Before we leave, I would like to leave you with this quote. Yeah. It says, and I quote: "The difference between a politician and a statesman is that a politician thinks about the next election, mm -hmm. while the statesman thinks about the next generation." This wise words comes from a man called James Freeman Clark. Why don't you reflect on them this weekend? Have a lovely evening. Mm -hmm.